A couple of weeks ago, my friend Sean bought a really fancy watch. Now this wasn't just any watch, this watch actually came with a motorcycle. And it's not just any motorcycle, it was the Miss Geico bike. This bike has been plagued with issues. Now, he got the bike to fire up and he got it to the dyno, but it didn't make the numbers that they were hoping for. You see, they got really excited when they found an article that said this could be a 300 horsepower motorcycle. That's insane, but it never got there. Now, even though Sean got to ride it, this bike was still plagued with problems. And the last time we saw it, it shut off and left him sit in the middle of an intersection. That's when he loaded it up onto the trailer and brought it here. Let's get this thing up onto the bench and Check it out, man. I don't know. It's, it's a supercharged, like, I'm, I'm a little giddy, I'm not gonna lie. So since Travis Pastrana raced the Miss Geico boat for a little while, does this kind of make Travis Pastrana and I ex-teammates in a way? Or two degrees from Travis Pastrana? <laughs> Call me Travis. I don't even know where to start. <laughs> Let's start with seeing if anything works. Okay, so this is the, we should hear noises. It's fuel pump. The fuel pump, I feel like that should have primed by now and shut off. Let's see, I'm gonna push the start button and see what happens. I love how they put the start button right here above the chain, that's neat. Let's hit that and see what happens, ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Nothing. That was pretty anticlimactic. Didn't even try to do anything. This starter's is just dead. Well, let's see. Maybe it was just battery. A smart fella would have plugged a battery in before we did this. Good thing I'm not a smart fella. And contact. Dang it. So what, do we have a locked up starter? Maybe the bike is so powerful it already killed this battery. Right. That you plugged into it. Maybe the bike just needs a more powerful battery. Remember the big dog? The customer complaint is the bike won't crank anymore. Apparently they tried jump starting it with like a bulldozer or something then, and, and <laughs> used 24 volts. Maybe it's got a runoff of a bulldozer battery. Yeah. This worked. is the one. <laughs> that went well. All right, good enough. Ready, here we go. Still absolutely nothing. Okay, well, we got a starter issue. I guess that's gonna be one of the first things we figure out, why well, that won't turn over. That's easy enough to do. Let's get this thing in the air and see what happens. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, let's start with battery. We'll get that pulled off. The battery box, the battery. Yeah, I think we're just gonna replace the starter if I can't get it to chooch. See, you say they weren't thinking of the guy who has to work on it. That was intentional. They didn't intend on this to be a running motorcycle. That's true. We are fighting a very we, uphill battle. So everything we're gathering is this bike was never meant to really do much other than look pretty. We're gonna try to change that. We're gonna have it look pretty and do much. Um, I remember being in like college and stuff and watching this show and you guys were working on these bikes. I was like, man, that's cool. Now here we are working on one of these bikes. And I'm like, wow, that's cool. Can't see what you're doing. You might as well just shut your eyes and pretend like you can. Craigerson, you must feel the biker screws. The part of mechanical link school was you had to like <laughs> take part of a bike apart blindfolded. Yeah. Wax on, wax off. Okay, we're gonna hook a charge to it a little bit and hit it with the battery tester. Surface charge. Once it has a load on it. Battery is no good. No good. Now that we have the battery out of the system, let's see if we can get this to work without the battery. Now, just for fun, I'm gonna push this button again. The starter's locked up, I bet you. That's why when Sean dropped the bike off, he dropped this off with it. Ooh, it's a new and improved starter. Yep. Well, is it improved or is it just- Well, I don't know. If it works, it's improved. So we're gonna throw that in. I guess that's gonna be step two, next step. Perfect. Okay, so let's pull starter. Owning a bike that you have to fix every, you know, six to 12 miles sounds like a blast. <laughs> but it was never meant to use, remember that. It was never meant to use. I don't like that excuse. <laughs> it's got two wheels and an engine, don't it? It's meant right. to roll. That would be cool. Maybe we can get Travis to ride it. There you go. He's not far from here. I mean, we're, we're practically neighbors. Mr. P, hit us up. P dog. <laughs> All right, this is the piece we need. Now for funsies, let's see if this thing spins. That starter's way weak. That 
so like what I did there was a little sketch like this thing here should just torque my it should have just ripped it right out of my hands we need to change this back plate because we don't have a starter button looks like that should oh be the, the same. button to start the bike is on the starter yeah, right. I missed that yeah yeah so here's what we got I can tell you how we're gonna swap it out. We're gonna run it to the uh, we're gonna run it to the starter shop, and they're gonna swap it out. Okay, so we need a checklist as well. Check done. It's up here. Frank, that's how things get all, not done. I'm all antsy. Let's just take a let's just let's just look at this thing here for a second. Like it's got such cool components on it, right? We have a Thompson supercharger. I mean, those things are like. <laughs> Amazing. Thunder Max tuner, of course. Baker transmission, an s, &S motor, PSR controls for the clutch and the, the brakes. We have braided steel lines. They're beautiful, like machining work everywhere and fabrication. This is kind of funny. The only surface area you have for stopping are these little lines here. What? Because that's where the caliper's grabbing. So it's not grabbing. So it's like skipping. Yeah, so it's not grabbing in those areas. That sounds like it would be really bad for the brake pads. Yeah, I guess they're not wearing brake pads out on this bike. <laughs> yeah, the, see the rear's more, the rear's a solid disc. But yeah, Baker Trans, like, I mean, it's got all good stuff on it. The, the machining work is beautiful. I wanna hear this thing fire up, but I guess we need a starter here. What we're gonna do is we'll get that starter replaced. I'm gonna start with a fresh battery. I'm gonna get new plugs. I'm gonna get oil and an oil filter. We do, I do wanna get to the injectors because from what I saw, it looked like the fuel line was bad and an injector popped, had popped out and there was some like goo from the fuel deteriorating. So I wanna back flush these injectors, make sure that they're clean, ready to go. My ultimate goal here is to get this thing fired up and running good so next time when we go to the dyno, we can get some numbers. All right, we're back. Back. But we don't have a starter. That's because we dropped it off. We dropped the starter off to get the starter button swapped around and- Did they say they can do it? Yep, they can do it. We just gotta wait for it. So in the meantime, what we're gonna do is, I noticed in the video that they replaced the fuel lines because the fuel lines were all just spoogy and, and deteriorated and gunk. But I didn't see them do anything with the injectors. So if there was that much gunk in the fuel lines, it makes sense that there could be that much junk in the injectors. So I'm gonna get to the injectors. We're gonna pull them out and we're gonna back flush them, do some of that stuff now while we're waiting on the starter because we can't start the bike without the starter. So I'm just gonna start pulling this apart. I'm not 100% sure what we're gonna find or how is this is supposed to come apart. I think it's just one of those things I'll figure out as I go. This is gonna take a while. If only there was a tool we had for, you know, automatically spinning it for you so you don't have to keep waving your hand back and forth. Like, it'd be cool if they made like, a device like that. Oh, oh my God! Like one of these? <laughs> oh, Dan. I'm feeling like this is all supporting the weight of the supercharger. I don't know, we're figuring this out together, folks. I could probably find an instruction book or something if I looked online, and I don't feel like it. This is much more fun. Okay, now that's loose. Okay, all right, look at this, we're getting somewhere. Where are we getting? I don't know, somewhere. Okay, there's another injector up here. So there's two down here, one, two, and then this is running fuel up to here to another injector. What? Why? I don't know, I'm not very familiar with superchargers and this kind of stuff. I, I don't know, is it just dumping? Why would it be dumping fuel up here? Why, how does that make sense? So much fun. That's what OCC is all about, right? Fun? All about fun, no drama, all fun. There's one. Oh, come on. Who puts the line in front of the wire that the, wire has to get past the line. What's going on in there? Oh, dude, nothing about this is easy. Craig, what are you fishing for? Did you say fishing? Yeah, I said fishing. Do you like fishing, but you're afraid this is gonna happen to you? <laughs> then you need Fishing Clash, the sponsor of today's video. The mobile game that allows you to fish like a pro without the hassle and expense of actually going fishing. And for no money, you can download the Fishing Clash game on the App Store or Google Play and start reeling in catches from real life locations around the world. There are more than 300 species of fish and the more you catch, you'll start earning better lures to reel in those big kahunas. Dan, what's this? Oh, that's my boot lure. Yeah, I was looking for that, thank you. 
Fishing Clash is the official sponsor of Major League Fishing for 2024. And some real life fishing events happening this year are gonna be replicated in the game. So you'll have a chance to try it for yourself. You can also take part in daily and weekly fishing competitions and lead your fishing clan to glory. All right, Dan, the first one to catch a snaggletooth thorkfish wins. You're on. Come on, come on, come on. Uh, yeah, I got it! No, I didn't even cast the line. You can download the game by clicking on my link down in the description or scanning the QR code on the screen. Use my special gift code, Bearded Fish, to get a $20 value reward, including a unique avatar, for free. When you launch the game for the first time, go to the upper right-hand corner, click the menu icon, and select gift code, and type Bearded Fish for that free gift. Thank you, Fishing Clash, for sponsoring this video. All right, that's enough goofing around. Let's get back to work. Oh my gosh. You know, you wouldn't be working on an OCC bike if you didn't throw at least one chair. These things were built on broken chairs, all right? Let's just, that's truth. Okay, now, oh, there it goes. Okay, I guess it's just gonna leak whatever fuel is in that line. Okay, so that's what we have for an injector. Now there's another one up front, yeah. Injector dynamics. I'm sure some of those numbers tell me what size it is, but I don't know how to read those numbers, so. Now let's pull this other one. This is going so swimmingly. Go. Okay. Oh, look here. So what I was saying is with all the goo and stuff in that old fuel line, it probably made its way to the injectors. So these are gonna get flushed, get a good spray pattern out of them. All right, let's start with back flushing. All right, so the way this is gonna work, plug this in, hit the button, hear that? That's the injector opening. So now I'm gonna take my cleaner, stick that in here, tighten this down, hit the button, spray the juice, it should come out. And the next thing we do is we flip the injector around and we spray back the other way. We're gonna do the same thing, but this time we're going in the direction of fuel flow. Look at that. That's what we wanna see, a nice clean mist. So now hopefully these things are nice and clean. Let's do the other one. So we back flush first, see what comes out of here. Flip it around. Maybe we can catch some brown or some junk coming out here, ready? There, Ooh, there we that. go. I mean, I know that doesn't seem like a lot, but that could really help with the, the runnability of this bike. It's gonna be running like a dream after this. You should send in everybody needs a Craig shirt to uh, Orange County Choppers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have clean injectors now. Still don't know what that deal is up there. This is an injector. Should we pull it then? Why would an injector be up there? No idea. Oh, this is fuel pressure. I bet you this is just a fuel pressure gauge. This, I thought it was a boost gauge. So they're just rerouting fuel up there for the gauge. For the pressure, yeah, I'm guessing. Okay, and then this should be the fuel line that was replaced. Don't ask too many questions, Dan, because I don't know the answers. This piece does have me curious, though. All right, all right, I'm just gonna pull it because now I'm curious. This is the first time I'm pulling a fuel injector off of a uh, supercharged bike. Off of the supercharger? I'm so confused right now. This thing here is not right. That's throttle position sensor, and that is nowhere near correct. All right, well, let's pull these bolts, because now I'm curious. Not much holding that together. Yeah, it's a little injector in there. I think I just figured out I gotta take this all apart. Very nice. Very nice. Let's just get it away from the bike and then we don't screw anything up. It should just be held in with the O-ring. There it goes, my, my, my. Ay, 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 there it is. Trying it, it was. Different nozzle, a little bit different of an injector. Now let's clean this one out. We cleaned the other two, might as well do this one. Spin it around. Do it again. Well, Craig, as, as tedious as this is, it's not cleaning carbs. It's true, it is not cleaning carbs. All right, well, let's put this back together. And then this swings around. Okay, we'll snug those up. Okay, that one tightens up. And that one tightens up. Tightens up 
nicely. And that one does not tighten up. Okay, so look at this. Look how much thread, no wonder. It only had like three threads on it. One, two, three threads. Look at that. That bolt should be this long. That's ridiculous. It's horrible. What the? Yeah, no, I didn't know it was, okay, so I want four bolts longer. All right. Now let's look at this menagerie. What kind of dollar store deal do we have going on here? Look, look, there's a split washer in behind the throttle position sensor. Don't, don't ask me why. I want to find a throttle, maybe another throttle position sensor. And they were having problems with this moving. So once we get it dialed and have it set where we want it, and that may even happen at the dyno, I don't know. But I'm going to go and I'm going to hot glue it in place. So <laughs> not even joking. Let's put the injectors in and act like we know what we're doing. How's that sound, Dan? I think we do know what we're doing. Oh, I know what I'm doing. Not acting if you convince yourself. That's right. This is going to be so much fun. I can't wait. Okay, injectors are back in and tight. Now I'm gonna put the wires back on. Okay, so this is gonna go up to the top. There's my other one. So I'll put this fuel line back on here. I'm not sure, man, this fuel line is still a little sus. Where the heck did this come from? <laughs> you can't remember? It, it, no, it was just laying in there. I didn't take it off. Like there was just an extraneous piece of Line with it's a filter a, like attached a crank, to it. It's like a crankcase breather. You didn't take that off? No. It was just floating was just in there? floating in there. But here, I think I figured out where it goes. There's a little uh, fitting right there. Eh, see my finger? Eh, eh. Eh, right there. Eh, your finger. Right there. Could that have been causing problems? Nah, it's just a breather. Yeah, don't need those. Breathing's optional. It breathes because it wants to. Couldn't figure out where to put it. They just kind of jammed it in there. They're like, nah, it's fine. No one's going to run this thing anyway. Right, nobody's, nobody's going to be dumb enough to use this bike. This is fun. I'm glad you're having fun. I'm having fun watching you. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm getting close to needing another chair, Dan. Do you want me to get that chair? <laughs> yeah, that's why they didn't put a hose clamp on. They couldn't figure out how to tighten the thing. <laughs> I'm glad you're having so much fun. I think it's fun funny that they like made a part specifically for something, but then as soon as they couldn't, it's like they just gave up on figuring out how to attach it. They're like, yeah, we'll just jam it in there. It'll be fine. We'll let that next idiot fix it. It'll float somewhere between the cylinders. It's all good. Yeah, it's like, well, it's close. Sitting there on the sofa. Man, dude, it would be so awesome to work on one of those bikes. <laughs> I'm still wrapping my head around the fact that this is an accessory to a race boat. Just goes to show you kids, be careful what you wish for and what you work towards. It might just come true. Okay, well, it didn't come off, so call that good for meow. If it doesn't come off, it's attached. That's right. <laughs> it's true. Truer words have never been spoken. I'm gonna call the injectors clean. They're back in. Crankcase breather is back on the bike. Still waiting on the starter. Oh, just look how cool this is, man. I always wanted a lizard. Oh, well, we finally got that shop lizard. Okay, so next thing we gotta do is get that starter on, get some fuel. I do wanna pull these plugs and we're gonna do a compression test because I'm really curious to see what kind of compression this motor has. Everything I'm hearing is it's a high compression engine, which is completely not correct if you're running boost you want low compression motors for boost we're back from the starter shop i wanted to move the uh, push button starter onto the new starter and then that didn't work because things are different and it didn't work so i'm going to just pull the shaft off of here put it on the new one then we got a wire and a starting switch it'll be fun first we gotta get this off it'll be fine it'll be fine i'm never sure how far i should go with that assumption it'll be fine It'll be fine. Just remember, Dan, if you see me run, run faster. Are you saying this OCC bike could blow up? This one's quite a bit beefier. It goes on there, sits like that. Spring on there. Oh, nice. It's the same shaft. This is going to work. There we go. All right, pull it out. I go, I'm going to pop this cover off. You don't want that on the seat? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, so here's the deal. This, Alan, is behind the fancy guard here. Oh, so now we have to take the fancy guard off. Yeah, it looks like we have a couple things in here. I wonder if all of them have to come off. Makes the coffee break that much sweeter. Sure does. 
Did that loosen anything enough here? <gasps> nice. Oh! Wow, that worked out a lot nicer than... Well, you open things up. Okay, so that's the bushing inside there for the starter shaft. We need to get the starter in and see where we're having an issue. Okay, moving over. I'm having a really hard time getting this shot. I, it doesn't fit. Like, look. Why doesn't it fit? I can't come, see. Come here, and I'll show you. Well, you're in the way if I go over there. Come over here, I'll show you. Why doesn't it fit? It's bigger. Well, didn't you want it bigger? Yes, but I didn't know bigger meant bigger. Of course bigger means bigger. What are you talking about? Bigger doesn't always mean bigger. Bigger, 100% of the time means bigger. Give me the camera, Dan. Oh, fine. You're fine. fired. Get out of here. Bigger always means bigger. Ridiculous. No, it doesn't. Okay, I think I see what's going on here. Come around to this of a... Is it, is it good? No. Why would it be good? Why would it be good? Okay, so the starter motor, the bigger starter motor is bigger. Go figure. And uh, it's hitting here. It's hitting the transmission plate right here. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's... That's fun. On a scale of one to swell, that's like a 12. So do we need a different starter or can we just like cut that? <laughs> start, start dremeling. Yeah. Starter's too big. It hits this part of the starter right here, that nub, and it hits the transmission plate right here, where that would be there. So I'm gonna start on the starter, take off as much as I can, refit, take some off, refit, see if I can get it to fit that way before taking the grinder to the bike, hopefully. That sounds good. Yes. Oh, I need safety glasses. Start there, hopefully. That'll do it. Please fit. Yeah? Yeah? Are we getting there? What the heck is goofing us up now? Ugh, we're running out of chairs. So our hole is 53.88. Okay. The piece we're trying to put in there is 53. Now I'm getting 84. 87. Not round at all. 89. 9 1. Oh, no wonder that thing doesn't want to go in there. It's an oval. It's an oval. I'm trying to put an oval peg in a square hole. Oval peg in a round hole. Running out of chairs, Dan. We're running out of chairs. Just threw one. I know, I should be feeling better. This is fun stuff. Still touching there a little bit. Okay, take another whack at it. We're gonna get good at this yet. That looks like. How much better? I don't know if it's any better. This is getting frustrating. Little bits, little bits at a time. Let's try that again. That should all be lined up where it wants to be. What am I missing, Dan? Like, why isn't it drawing in here? Want the starter to go in? I mean, maybe if I just go through here, maybe there's some burrs. Just skim a little off. Doesn't take much, but it takes enough that it's screwing us up. This is this is almost telling me now that what if the spacer is too long? Okay, here we're gonna measure the starter shaft. This whole thing's just a menagerie of issues. No wonder they were always on such tight deadlines in the TV show. I thought it was just to build drama. Apparently, that's what the throwing of chairs was for. Okay, so you can see where it's where it's a little tight because it knocked off the marker. So you can see where it's rubbing. If we have to grind down every other surface of this starter, this wasn't the right size starter. We made a new size of starter. Yeah, that's all right. Making new parts, one file stroke at a time. 27.4 mil, 26.73. So right now what's happening is this sleeve is coming in here and then this is going down there. That sleeve is a hair too long. If we shorten that sleeve by half a millimeter or a little better, that'll sit in there, that'll allow this to come in further and that will allow the starter to go in more. Carry the 12. Yeah, Dan. Okay, did that, did you follow? One? Yeah, I followed, I okay. hope you're right. Yeah, me too. Now we're gonna use a tool that I haven't used in a while. Craig, what could this tool be? It's just a sander. Oh. Sorry, nothing fancy. Still, I forgot there was a sander back here. 
I'm pretty sure that's how they would have done it in the OCC shop. <laughs> All right, now let's see what this does. That might just do it. That might just do it. I'm not celebrating until I see that thing in there snug. Snug as a bug. Hallelujah, Merry Christmas. I don't believe it. Don't believe it so? It is so. Do you enjoy that as much as I did? I'm gonna enjoy this until we have to take it out again for some stupid reason. If you had to grind down that spacer to fit it in there, is there a chance that when the starter engages, it's gonna like grind up against the side of the housing? Like when it engages, because the starter goes like Boop. I'm gonna stop asking stupid questions. No, that wasn't a stupid question. Dang it. You know what I mean? Like I maybe do. it'll uh, spin and like get all red hot in there. Or that'll fix itself because then it'll just kind of grind itself so, down to the right size. Yeah, it will self clearance. Clearance, clearance. I, I don't, I, I'm tired of thinking for today. So we're gonna put this on here and not think about it. I just wanna hear this bike crank over for crying out loud. Let's see if I can make heads or tails of this stuff here quick. Okay, this, this wire generally is power coming from your starter button. And that powers this, closes the solenoid in here, boom, your starter works. They have this hooked up to the auto decompression levers so that when you manually, the starter button was here on the old starter, push that and it connected all of this. It was sending power through this wire up to the decompression switches, which are up here, top of the cylinders. I'm not gonna worry about that at the moment. Oh, come on, I just need a drip. Get Nancy. Nothing's working there. Starting fluid. That'll work. Oh, here, Craig. I got, I got a seat for you. <laughs> you Want to sit down while you're doing this? Keep it handy. I might need it. We're gonna need more chairs, Dan. All right, now let's pull the spark plugs so we can turn the engine over easy while we test the starter out. What? What? Look What's how wrong? bad that plug is. I don't know how it would have gotten that fouled up just from the little bit of running they did. I'm curious to see if we can start this thing. Are you curious as well? Went through all that work to get the starter in. I wanna know what it does. I'm gonna cheat. Ready? This out, we should go here to that. All right, I'm ready. I was ready to hear something. I, heard, I hear nothing. I hear nothing. Okay, so what needs to be hooked up here? Okay, so that one goes to ground. This one here might need to be on the positive. I'm glad I have all this stuff right here at the chain. A lot of nothing. Okay, so red and red and red. Everything I'm doing here is awesome. Couldn't be more nothing than that. You can hear this motor turn or am I getting fired again? I don't know. Whenever you're troubleshooting stuff like this, <clears throat> the first thing you wanna do is get a new fresh battery. Make sure you have a good battery. I didn't do that and it bit me. So now I have a good battery and I have that wired up. So I actually ran wires and everything instead of working off of jumper cables and stuff. Now, if I pull the ignition switch, that primes, and I got a new start button wired in here. Contact. Whoa, totally even have to push that bit. It got a hair trigger Holy on that button. Cow. Oh, Ugh. I don't think that was turning the motor anymore. That's doing something else. Okay, so the problem is that starter shaft came back too far and came out. I think I know what I did wrong. This is gonna come back to, remember when I cut off a little or sanded off a tiny bit of that spacer inside the starting shaft? Yes. Maybe shouldn't have done that. Uh -oh. Greg was lying in bed last night thinking, and he called me. He said, I bet you that could be a problem. See, Greg knows that Craig does this stuff. In addition to cleaning up the shop and like doing work second shift, he'll like watch the raw footage right. of what we did. Yeah. So he knows all our mistakes. He knows everything. Don't try this at home, kids. There it goes. Hey! <laughs> Whew. Okay, now let's put this back on. Or someone gets hurt. Yeah. I'm not sure I'm still quite satisfied with this, but if it's going to start the bike, it's going to start the bike. Okay, so crank's over. Is it doing or was it like sometimes doing, sometimes not? Sometimes doing and sometimes not. That's good enough. I yeah. mean, 50-50 chance it starts your bike. Yeah. Or grinds your starter apart. Let's move on to more fun things. Like <laughs> 
like, like anything. Like anything different than the starter for right now. Let's do a compression test. Ooh, that sounds like fun. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna watch this gauge. Oh boy, how are we gonna do all this? Oh, there you go. go. Full throttle. Here we go. 250 pounds. So where, where do you think it should be? I have no idea to be honest, but for, oh. a, <laughs> for a turbo. That's a lot. That's a little more than the old dirt bikes run. Hey man, Mr. OCC said this thing's got to be 300 horsepower. So. Apparently, you need all the compression. Now we'll put this back here. And we're off. <laughs> or not. No. Hi. Well, are they consistent? Yep. No, not. Uh, yeah. yeah, they're close enough. All right. What do you think we need for this bike to fire up? Racing gas. Got racing fuel. I have new plugs. I got to put that uh, throttle position sensor back on. I was about to say I want to hear this kitten purr, but it's supposed to be like a gecko, and I don't know what noises they make. Well, the Chinese barking gecko barks. <laughs> Let's hear this gecko woof, Craig. I guess we'll start with new plugs. Careful, you don't want to mix up the uh, the pipe dope with the anises when you're doing your spark plugs. That would be bad. It's like putting preparation H on your toothbrush. Plugs are on, fuel line's on. I'm gonna put one of these screws in so this isn't flopping in the breeze. Man, this thing is put together like a piano because now I can't get this back on here. Oh, there, okay, if I just hit it. Like a piano. I think the worst part about this is gonna be getting fuel in it. That's not looking fun. Okay. This throttle position sensor apparently has been the bane of Sean's existence for a while because he kept having problems with it. But we're gonna stick it on here like that. This is just gonna be temporary. If it fires up, then we might be able to adjust this to help adjust our idle. I don't know, we'll figure it out. Dan, you know what we do? We figure it out. Figure it out, figure it out. We need some fuel. Caution, wear eye protection. Probably don't wanna get this in your peepers. I don't want to add too much fuel. I'm going to just do this a little bit at a time. Just in case we got to do more stuff. I don't want a full tank of fuel. I got 400. Oh. That's what you want to do is spill the race gas on the toaster charger. Mm. Six hundred cc's at a time. Oh. See if it'll run, All right? I would hope so. Yeah, it should be enough to run it. Key in. Still feel like that pump should stop once it's primed. All right, here we go. Oh, hold on. This wire here goes up to the auto decompression. So they had it wired up here at the starter. And they did that because when you were pushing in the starter button, it was powering this, do, 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 do. these were opening, the bike would fire, you let go, it takes the power away. So I need to do a quick jumper wire from there to there. Okay, here, we're gonna make a, a wire quick. And here's how we're gonna make the wire. And it's gonna be- Awesome. Amazing is what it's gonna be. So I'm just making a jumper wire for the auto decompression switches. There it is. Now we take a whiff of the heat gun. Gotta be careful that's hot, so I don't want that touching anything. Okay, so now that's all jiving. Okay, back to where we were. Now the auto decomp should work. And that's this up here, ready? Yeah, I'm ready, go. Shoot that again, Silly. sorry. There we go. Stare at the elbows. <laughs> okay, that actually, that's not bad. Nice. <clears throat> it is running really rich, I believe, judging by what's coming out of the pipe. Yeah, um, is there anything we can do about that? Once it's on the dyno, oh, okay. it'll get, we're gonna tune that right out. We are gonna tune that right out. Nice. All right, now let's just fire it up one more time. OK, 
Craig, I really don't like the fact that the belt just wobbles around and it wobbles faster when you rev it. <laughs> <laughs> like, are you, do you, did you notice this? Oh yeah, that's where we're at. It's fine. Okay, man, that makes me feel so much better. So much better. So that's all working good. I think maybe I don't like is the starter. Okay, but we got bigger fish to fry. I'm not gonna worry about runnability with the engine at the moment because we have a date set at the dyno for this bike. Okay, so next thing I'm gonna worry about until we get this thing tuned and dialed is gonna be controls. This thing is an absolute bear to sit on and it's just uncomfortable. So we're gonna mess around with the bars and I don't know what else, but we're gonna make this thing road trippable. That was awful. Ah! Until next time, thanks for watching. We're gonna get this thing ready for the dyno. Don't forget to check out Fishing Clash, the sponsor for today's video. Use our code BEARDEDFISH to get your free prize. Have a great weekend, thanks for watching. I hate this bike.